Hello everyone. So as you've seen, Scum has released a new update 0.96 and it has changed and added a lot of features to the game. So in this video, I'm going to provide you with all the information you need to know regarding the latest Scum update. But please remember, Scum is still in early access at the time of recording this video, so some of the information may change. As part of this update, the devs have released a new game trailer that shows off a dropship dropping off armored NPCs to fight players, and it also shows a character that is allied with the armored NPCs. I won't show the full trailer here, but I will put a link to the video in the description below so you can go check it out after this video. It is important to note though that the armored NPCs are not in the game yet and the devs have stated that they will not be in the game until the 1.0 update in 2025. To get us started, the first major change of this update is the new movement rework system in regards to character movement. This movement rework system has slowed down character movements and added more inertia to character movements, making movement feel more realistic. As an effect of this though, PvP situations will require a more tactical approach. The movement rework has eliminated the bunny hopping meta due to jumping now requiring 30-50% to 50 of your stamina depending on your character skills. But after performing a jump animation, your character stamina will quickly increase to allow you to continue on. Another PvP meta movement that has been significantly impacted by movement rework is the strike running, also known as zigzagging. With the addition of more inertia added to your character movement, you can now no longer change your character's movement direction instantly, but rather there is a slight delay for your character to overcome the inertia to continue moving in a new direction. The next major part of the movement rework is that there are now four different speeds at which your character can move, which are walk, jog, run, and sprint. Depending on your character weight, stamina level, and character stats, you will experience these speeds differently. Another factor that plays into movement speed is your character's stamina. So depending on your character's stamina level, your max character speed will change accordingly. Meaning, as your character's stamina goes down, so does your character's max movement speed. There are new server settings for admins to adjust in regards to movement to give private server owners the ability to set up servers however they please. But it is now more critical than ever to work on skilling and leveling up your character's strength, constitution, along with running and endurance skills because having a highly skilled character will give you a large advantage over non-leveled characters. For the second new major change with this update is the implementation of armbands and the removal of floating player names. The armbands are a new clothing item that takes three rags to craft and the armband can be refreshed to represent your squad's logo. Keep in mind though that you can steal other squad's armbands and wear them without the armband resetting to your squad's logo, so you will have the ability to pretend to be a member of another squad when in a PvP situation. Wearing another squad's armband will not allow you to interact with the squad's base, chest, or cars, but it will only visually make it look like you're a member of the other squad so you can try to fool them. The devs did put in admin server settings to enable slash disable the floating name tags so private server owners will have the ability to set up their servers however they see fit, but for official servers, there are no longer floating names and squads will have to rely on armbands and good communication skills. The third major change and improvement with this update is the continued refinement of the puppet spawn system, also known as the horde system. To quickly summarize the changes, the spawn range of puppets has been increased, which from my testing seems to have reduced the chances of puppets spawning directly next to your character. The increased spawn range that I have experienced from my testing has been about 100 to 150 meters along with the increased spawn range they have also brought back the sleeping puppets from the old puppet spawn system. Sleeping puppets will allow players to sneak up on puppets within 5 meters before they will begin to aggro allowing you to play even more stealthy and tactical than before. Now for the fifth new major feature of this update is the quest system. Now, this update contains what the devs are calling the soft launch of the quest system, so this is not the final version of quest, meaning that there will be a lot of content and features added to the quest system in the future. But with the release of quest, there are currently 150 quests with three different quest types. With quests, there are three ways to accept them from either the quest boards that are found in most POIs across the map, or from the traders via their quest books, or lastly from the cell phone once you have completed the cell phone quest. 
To get started with quests, you can either obtain your starter quest at one of the quest boards across the island or travel to the general goods trailer at any of the trader outposts and start from there. Once accepting your first quest, it will tell you what you need to do to complete the quest. Something to note is while you have an active quest, you are unable to purchase the quest items from the trader, so this means that you will have to go loot for the item needed for the quest to be able to meet the quest requirements. Quest work in a tiered system, so you will have to complete the basic quest before moving on to the more advanced quest. Also, the same thing goes for unlocking all the different trader quests. At first, you will only have access to the general goods trader quest, but as you complete the general goods trader quest, you will slowly unlock the armory trader quest and so forth. The order of trader quests that you unlock goes as follows. Starting off with general goods, then moving on to the armory, then thirdly, the mechanic, and lastly, the doctor. The quest will provide rewards in a few different ways currently, such as cash and fame points, with the more advanced quests providing trader price discounts and reduced fame point requirements at the traders. And lastly, you have the ability to look at your quest and quest progress in the journal tab in your inventory. The sixth major addition with this update is the implementation of base building turrets. Base building turrets are a new way of defending your base from either players, puppets, animals, mechs, vehicles, and dropships. Base building turrets are craftable items in the base building menu and there are five variations of turrets. The turret variations are basic, 50 cal, flamethrower, minigun, and rocket. Each turret has their own unique crafting recipe with three of the turrets requiring new parts from mechs. Yes, you heard me right. You now have to kill mechs to obtain some of the parts needed to craft base building turrets. Each base building turret has its own unique targeting area, ammo type, ammo capacity, and electricity requirements. To power the turrets, you have to utilize a generator and ensure both the turret and the generator are turned on. Caution though, because from my testing, I have found that base building turrets will damage your base when shooting, so keep this in mind when implementing them into your base. The turrets have the ability to either be built on foundations, floors, or even on the ground itself, which will give you a wide variety of building options, but they must be within your flag zone. To be able to load the turrets with ammo, you just need to place the ammo in the vicinity of the turret and hold right click on the turret and select load ammo. To defeat base building turrets, you have a couple of options. Option number one is utilizing the EMP grenade to disable the turret and the generator powering it. The second way you can defeat a turret is by destroying them by shooting them. You can destroy turrets with guns and explosives, but here are some of the ammo requirements needed to destroy the turrets. I will be doing a more detailed guide on base building turrets soon, so be on the lookout for that video. For all you new players out there, the devs have made improvements to the new player experience. The devs have added a new AI assistant, Dina, into the game to help guide new players around the island and show them the basics of the game. The manual tab also got updated with new tasks and information to help further the new player's knowledge of the game. If you are not interested in having Dina show you the basics of the game, you can turn her off in the settings under the game tab. Another awesome addition with the latest update is that we got two new weapons which are the MAC-10 and the SCAR-L. The MAC-10 is a submachine gun that shoots 9mm ammo and has a magazine capacity of 32 rounds. The MAC-10 has a dedicated suppressor attachment and also allows you to attach small weapon sights utilizing the short improvised rail. Currently, the MAC-10 has an extremely high fire rate with very minimal recoil, so in close quarter combat, the MAC-10 is a laser. The SCAR-L is a new assault rifle that is chambered in 556 by 45 The SCAR-L allows for all range of weapon sights to be attached while also having a medium fire rate. Along with the new weapons, a weapon that has been a true classic of the game has gotten a rework and this weapon is the improvised shotgun which is also now known as the improvised rifle. The improvised rifle got a visual rework and allows you to shoot a wide range of ammo types. Another new item that got added with this update is the new spectral scope. The spectral scope has a 2x6 magnification with the addition of iron sights. The spectroscope is good for short to medium ranges and can be attached to the majority of weapons. Another big change that got added in regards to weapons is weapon malfunctions are now back in the game. 
If you are not familiar with weapon malfunctions, all you need to know is that there are four possible ways your weapon can malfunction while shooting, causing you not to be able to shoot again until the malfunction is fixed. Weapon malfunctions are impacted by the quality of ammo and magazines you have in your weapon, along with the overall durability of your weapon. To fix a weapon malfunction, you must first hold the R key and it will open a radial menu. You must select the correct malfunction for it to fix the malfunction. Once the correct malfunction is selected, your character will perform an animation to resolve the weapon malfunction and then you can continue shooting again. The devs have also brought back the cruiser bike with this update in all its glory. The cruiser bike is now a part of the modular vehicle system that allows you to attach saddlebags and a front shield with a radio. The cruiser bike has its own built-in storage with the ability to hold one hiking backpack. The cruiser bike also has a top speed of 148 kilometers per hour and does well both on-road and off-road. Some adjustments have been made to base building elements in this update with all the base building elements getting a new visual look. I have done some additional testing and it seems that all the base building elements have the same HP and damage taken from explosives so it seems that all the changes to base elements are only visual. Two new base building elements have been added which are the hatch element and the vertical half wall element. The hatch element now allows you to further secure your base and is able to be upgraded. The hatch element is identical to base building doors in regards to the amount of locks, zappers, and BCU lock that can be attached. The new vertical half wall is a modular wall piece that is half the size of a normal wall piece and has the same amount of health. Some other new items that were added are the headlamp, barrette hats, and school backpacks. The headlamp is an item that can be equipped on your character and worn with most hats, masks, and some helmets. The headlamp has an adjustable brightness and requires a battery to turn on. Another major part of this update is additional bug fixing, quality of life improvements, and server settings. I will display a list of these on the screen now, but I will not read all of them as there are quite a few. But there is one I would like to highlight, which is the devs have fixed the issue with scopes and weapon sights disappearing when aiming. So far from my testing and playtime of the new update, I have not experienced the weapon sight issue, so it does seem that this issue is fixed or greatly improved. So from all the time I have had to play and test the new update so far, I am pretty pleased with this update. The movement system changes are going to take some time to get used to, but personally I think it makes Scum feel more like a survival game instead of a game like Call of Duty. I have really been enjoying all the new items that have been added and I have not yet experienced any major bugs other than purchasing items from traders currently seems to be a little bit buggy, but I will continue to do my part to test the new content and features to provide my feedback to the devs. I want to make a note though that as part of this update the devs have asked for as much feedback as possible about all the new content and changes so make sure you are leaving your feedback in either the scum community discord or in the scum community forums which i will put links to in the description below i hope you found this video helpful and if you did make sure you hit that like button and if you'd like to see more weekly scum content make sure to hit that subscribe button but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below but like always guys do good do have fun and do be kind. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.